Radyo Inquirer 990. Bayan ng tatanong, mamamayang nag-uusig sa Radyo Inquirer 990. Arlene de la Cruz, Jake Malarazo, Banner Story. Banner Story. Balik tayo mga kababayan sa Banner Story at 8.34. Alam mo, dalawang bagay na ang napapansin ko, Raul Cosare, saka Erwin Makatanga, eh, dyan sa libingan ng mga bayani. Ha? Ang una-unang napansin ko, ha? ang mga balitang gusto kong bantayin dyan, tatlo eh. Una-una, si Bato. Gusto kong maalam kung pa- ano nangyari, ba't napatay yung dalawa. No? Pero pangalawa, napansin ng mga reporters, eh, nandyan daw po mga kababayan, ay hindi nila nakikita yung ambassador ng US, si Philip Goldberg. Di ba si Goldberg kasi tinawag na bading ni ano eh, ni, uh, ni Duterte. Hindi ra- wala ho dyan. Di ba? Pagkatapos nandun na rin daw yung, ano, yung uh, pinaglilibingan kay, kay uh, pag- dating Pangulo Marcos. So ito na po yung speech ng Presidente. To the Philippines, Erwin. members of the House of Representatives. Oh, sige, bigyan daan na muna natin. Ha? Okay, pakinggan na natin. National Historic Commission of the Philippines, Mayor Laarne Cayetano, ma'am, good morning. General Ricardo Visaya and other members of the server, major service of commanders, General Ronald de la Serna and other officer me- officers of the Philippine National Police, officers and members of various veteran organizations, officers and men and women of the armed forces of the Philippines, fellow workers in government, my beloved countrymen. It's quite vague to me now, but uh, we had a full discussion of our national heroes. But one, I consider myself among the top, was the late Justice uh, Jose Abad Santo. He was uh, taken uh, prisoner by a warden in our country. And it was in La- Ma- Malabang where he was made to swear to the allegiance of the flag of the opposite enemy. And he refused, and his son began to cry and said, Father, why don't you just make a salute? It does not make any difference. There are no people here. We are in a prisoner's camp. And you can do it without losing you are under threat and under duress. You know, from the books that we were lectured on, his answer to his son was, uh, son, do that, do that to me. Not everyone is given a chance to die for his country. I may be insignificant, insignificant in this country. I'm not a splendid pol- politician. But how I wish I could hear from my son the same pleading and how, how could a higher would uh, have disbanded the way the Chief Justice said before he died. One of the heroes that I really, and really, nobody or not everybody is given a chance in this country. I have been your president for just a few months and uh, I have tried my best to restore order in the country. It was really the order that was uh, besetting us day in, day out. And because France to face. I was before my inauguration, a man in a hurry, and wanted the peace talks to start at the very first year of my term. And I'm just a bit happy, but not so, that we have been able to establish a working relationship about peace with the Communist Party of the Philippines. I was informed by our uh, representatives, uh, Doresa and Bellio, 
and here with the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, uh, that everything is going s smoothly, and uh, we might hear some definite results in the coming months before December. I pray to God that it would continue as peacefully as we have hoped for, and I hope that uh, I would also have the same success. Establish the modality of the talks, and I would like to salute uh, Murad of the MILF, Anur Miswari, for expressing his intention to join us, maybe in one place or different settings, whatever it is, me as long as we talk. So now, uh, we have a lull uh, in the three fronts that we really have been fighting ever since. We're talking with the communists now, maybe establish a modus vivendi somewhere with the MI, and let's begin to talk about peace. I really appreciate all the men and women connected with this enterprise, and I hope someday the Philippines would realize a nation really in peace and everything in order. But there are things also that places us at the disadvantage now. Things that would create disorder and disturb the peace. We have a drug crisis that some of our fellow citizens consider just a police problem. And to the extent that it is an ailment, and that because it's an ailment, the punitive action of the police should not take place. I am sorry for my country, for there are citizens really that sh uh, fall short of grasping a situation here. Two years ago, PDEA, which was then under General Santiago, came up with a horrifying statistics that there are three million Filipinos addicted to Shabu, the meth. In the ensuing months, when I took over, we had a fairly good and accurate count. Some of them undergoing the urine test to test positive, and they numbered 600,000. Now, if you add that to the, the earlier prediction of PDEA, add it a little bit of growth, at a very liberal and conservative increase, incremental increase of something like 700,000. So you have 3 million Filipinos who are addicted to men. The problem is the eternal fight between the rich and the poor. And this, uh, you know, uh, strife was injected almost into the level of a contentious issue about drugs. They would want to make it appear that just because this guy is poor and therefore he should not be made accountable to law but placed in a hospital. And even if he wanted to, we do not have that the hospital beds of that number. Simply cannot be done. They said, well, he is poor, and, you know, uh, whether he has been selling and destroying the lives of people, just so but you know, he is a poor, so it is the poor now that want a special privilege, because we worse, so where are the big fish? You know, I, time and again I told you, I, I, I hope uh, you can, this matter can enter, the gray matter between your ears. They are no longer here. They are no longer here. But they are to play the game. What we have on the level of the streets are the lieutenants. At saka yung mga basurero. The only problem now is that, uh, 
a few months before, before I started, the players involved the law enforcement agencies of our country. Makes us very, very sad. And that is why there is the ready explanation of why so many. You can just imagine a country with 3,700,000 addicts. And say that they are just used. My God, if you are a user, you are a pusher. You have to connect somebody to finance because you have to have to fix everything. That is why they go around killing people and when they go skunk in their brain, children kill them, rob, and these statistics wouldn't be brought up to these people crying about justice. My God, if you want justice to be done, it has to be against everybody. You know, do not give me that just because he is poor, he has to earn, he has to sell his job. And that act does not really matter to some because they should be protected. I, I, you know, I, I do not simply disagree with you. I consider the fight against drugs a war. There's a crisis in this country. It's, it's drugs. We might still end up like the South American countries under fractured governments. I am declaring not ordering the police to just a few punitive action. That's why it was not me or I that declared the drug problem and place it at a level as a national security threat. It was President Arroyo then who worried about the problem that she raised it to the level of as a national security threat and therefore calling the armed forces to do something about it also. But it was not just uh, just being brooded that, uh, well, actually uh, the army does not. You know, if the military will not do its part and leave it to the police alone, we cannot ever, ever suppress the drug problem. It has infected every nook and corner of this country, involving generals, mayors, barangay captains, and so many of the ninjas, they call them, these are the police who are into it. So today I might be inclined to place a reward on their head, the members of the ninja or members of the police who are then protecting the drug syndicates in this country, I'm placing per head two million. And if you are there, you might, you might want to I want them, I want the police and the armed forces to destroy the drug apparatus in this country. We are its transshipment of so many countries, I just for a matter of courtesy, in front of the diplomatic corps, I might just their time. But we all know that uh, the Philippines is also a transshipment. If I could just have the matrix there in front of you, then maybe you'd start to believe in me. I have this own duty. I am no big politician. I'm just uh, a mayor of a far away city in the south, facing Australia. And on a clear day, you can see the Australians swimming there in the beach. I, I came from that place, and I was not even a, a national figure. But what brought me to the presidency, I really do not know. What gave me, what, what is really the with a huge 15 million 
six million of which was really the margin above my closest opponent. So what is the message of the Filipino? Well, I conducted a very campaign. When I said, my countrymen, if given a chance by God and the Filipino people, I would destroy corruption in government. And it will be done. Whether they like it or not, there will be a clean government at the end of the day. I said I will fight criminality and drugs. Most of the crim criminal acts are really on the account of the drug meanings. So, the campaign will be continuous and I will be, as, as I have said in the campaign, rallies all over the country, I will be harsh as I can ever be. When you fight a war, do not give me. I will finish this problem of corruption, drugs, and crime. And I hope at the end of my term, and even if it's... A, I've been telling Congress, hurry up the federal system, because I said, uh, you follow the country office because that would hold together the country. For example, like France, the only elected leader is the, aside from nationally, it's the president. There's a very limited power, but powerful ones. Powerful statements, but very limited. Do not ever commit penos of going, to, going into a pure parliament. It would be disaster for this country. Somebody should hold the armed forces and the police to control the country. In the meantime, that we march forward to the progress to the next century, and after this, our children would have proven it. But at this time, it would be good to have a federal system because it, the present unitary type, has done us no good. It is an unfair. Uh, Thing. It's the same office, Malacanian. That's why I, I not say Malacanian. I just say the people's palace. Sometimes they, they call it Malacanian. The word Malacanian is uh, one of the vestiges of imperialism. I'm not comfortable with it, actually. And I, and I should understand when I say I, 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 never, I do not ever mention Malacanian. People's palace. It is the people's palace, actually. I kong gamitin yang. So, I do not want to take much of your time. I dedicate again in front of the brave Filipino soldiers who died for us. And we honor them. And uh, this message... I have imparted to the military and the police very clearly. You will have my support. You will have all the things that you need to fight criminals. Do not worry. In the pursuit of law and order, pursuant to my directions, you do not have to worry about criminal liability. I will go to the prison for you. I take full legal responsibility. You just do it according to the books. There will always be witnesses. And if you have the witnesses on your side at the time, it might be okay. If there is none, and you are uh, already pressed down, then do not worry. Just my name and I will be there to protect you but for those in government the police the corrupt police and the corrupt judges and the corrupt prosecutors there will be 
a day of come upon us. There will be day, there will always be a day of reckoning. I hope, I said, we do not want violence. Nobody does. We cannot build a country over the bones of our own citizens. But maybe far and wide in the history of this country, you might not really be meeting someone next time or at all. The kind of man mindset that I have. My country first. Do not destroy as it is you have drug and criminality has destroyed a part of this generation, our children. You do not hit them hard because the corrosive money is effect of money corrupts everybody there. You'd be surprised. Bantay kayo dyan. Talagang matin dito. But as, as far as I'm concerned, if you are with the government, if you are uh, with the law enforcement, and you start to, then we'll, I, will, I will not allow you to be back. No such thing. I'll burn you at the cremation. Strong words, there's no bravado in it except the sincerity. You know, I do not want to repeat this kind of... Uh, but when I was mayor of Davao City, and I was for 22 years, four years as the vice mayor of my daughter, and four years, uh, three years as a congressman, three years as a... Uh, I, when I became mayor in 1988, I was at the crossroads of the lifting of Marshall of Cory Won, and... Uh, so much disorder in my city. And I just simply said to the hold uppers, to the drug syndicates, to the criminals, please leave my city. If you do not leave my city, I will kill you. And for those who did not they died. That's an open confession. I have not, I have not reached that point. But maybe, if you are the persistent, if you still find uh, drug a viable, then there is always something to it. There is all there is always a, a drawback in this planet. You cannot you cannot have your cake and eat. I said that pity the guys are there already in the graves. So be it. I will be happy to join them. No problem about that. Prison, no problem. I will go to prison. I will not even ask for a special room. Just give me a bed with a foam. Give me something to read. It's piling up. And I have not really had the chance to rip them all. So, so do not scare me about the human rights. Uh, those guys, those guys are gener genocide. But sir, what pinatay? Wala naman ako pinatay na bata. I did not drum, uh, drop a barrel gun, just like I name them Assad. And there is the idiots there in... I, I do not burn women because they, or they refuse to have sex. I simply want the law-abiding citizens of this country. Comfortable. Period. No, they are not molested. They can go about anywhere in town. The streets are for their children. They should come home safe and sound. That they are not held up, no hold up, no nothing. We will reach that point. Remove me as president or pray that I will die in the meantime with no resurrection. Huwag mo yung ako takote yung UN crimes. You must be crazy. 
genocide. I'm fighting against criminal. From here, I will fly to Samar. Why? Because I have to commiserate with the family of Gary. Forgot his name. You see, policeman, and he was also killed. There are a lot. I, I, it's, it's two soldiers or police a day for me. Katapos lilipad naman. We're doing all right uh, with the Abu Sayyaf. So that we go back to my premise of the speech. But the problem is terrorism and drugs. It's, it's confronting America, terrorism and drugs. Here, China, there's an insurrection there. Thailand, they're blowing up. Turkey is uh, on the state of, on the edge right now. So, if you just think of just, you know, uh, arresting them and, and the O'Brien, they are, mga sundalo, remember this. Mahal ko kayo. Kaya lahat na binigay ninyo, yung, yung, I'm not, ah, so, mabuti na, kapiing. I was, uh, this was my practice, even when I was in grade one. That's why I always pass, but only the 75 level. <laughs> Usually, copy. Uh, uh, all study, no play, very bad. Uh, this was handed to me by Secretary Jokno. It was a very, I think he's the best uh, that ever was in, in as uh, budget secretary. That's why uh, public would like to thank you, sir, for accepting my offer to join the cabinet. I really appreciate it very much. And also, I might announce that I'm appointing, most of my appointees are really military men, but not because of anything. But I do not crave for loyalty for somebody to nurture personal loyalties to me. This is not a dictatorship. I'm going, and I said you can have the, if you can perfect the federal system three years from now, we have six years, I will retire. And I'll give it because I cannot be a candidate of an office during my term. So I would be totally out of the picture. And I would gladly step down. No problem about that. And if there's the liability of so many military men, just point it out. But it was the authority who gave the order. That we had to defend ourselves because we have the widows and children to worry kung ang kalaban mauna. Go ahead. Uh, just uh, do your work. But do not, please do not, do not join the other side because you will be the first in the list. Kayo ang mauna. Now for those who are not paid by the previous administrations, actually all of them, uh, for release is 4.7, 4.7 billion for the payment of the total administrative liability, TAD arrears, of widows and deceased World War II veterans. And eight who are 80 years old and above, the amount is appropriated in 2016 budget but not released by Aquino. Well, uh, nalagay yung pangalan niya. Never mind him. <laughs> Dumaan na siya eh. It's no longer his, it's no longer his uh, problem. The joint RR to implement the release has been signed by Secretary Jokno and Secretary Lorenzana. 3.5 billion for the widows. Be careful if you are not uh, if you are not loyal to your wives. She might be joining the 3.5 billion for the widows. And if I were the wife, I'd be, be, think again now, uh, there's 3.5 billion waiting for me. And 1.2 1 billion for the AFP retirees. So, okay na ba yan? Kulang po daw, sir. So, it will be released as soon as possible.
yung for the God forbid that you are the recipient but automatic from my social uh, fund it's automatic 250,000 pesos hindi yan kasali sa mga ano-ano inyo that's purely from me sa uh, office of the president so and the 20,000 to immediately get hold of the money and Filipinos we have this uh we have this habit, I did just share with you the idiosyncrasies of uh, the Philippines. I do not know they got it, but uh, nine, I said, maybe I'm not trying to offend anybody. But the practice is uh, for nine days. Si Ira Narito. If you die, this is nine days before you can be buried. So the, on the ninth day, so first you are poor, in the rural areas, you have to sponsor a dinner, lunch for the uh, nine days of waiting. The same cannot uh, part with their uh, loved ones. But that is a culture which has to be corrected, uh, you know, little by little. It's deeply rooted in, the, in our religion, and uh, though it's not a good one. I've been uh, also with the birth of family planning. I will push it hard, really hard. We need the pl uh, family planning, and we need to rationalize everything there. So I'd like to thank all of you, especially the diplomatic corps, for sharing this moment with us. And uh, we are all happy. Uh, we have this problem now. China, uh, it's not worth the, I don't go to war. So if I do not, there's always war and peace. If I am not ready for war, then peace is the only thing. Silent now, and the ambassador is there, but I would state my case before you. I will never bring the matter, because it might lead only to the suspension of the talks with China. And that is not good, Mr. Ambassador. So I propose that we just uh, have a soft landing everywhere. I will not use the judgment arbitral now. But I would uh, one day sit in front of your representative or you, and then I will lay bare my position. And I would say that this paper get out of the four corners of this document, and that is the arbitral judgment. But for now, Mr. Ambassador, I want to just talk to you for the moment, maybe give us time to build our forces also. <laughs> we have uh, superiority, but if it comes to a parity between uh, as many ships as you have, uh, maybe, just maybe, but if we continue and treat each other with brothers and understand, especially the plight of the fishermen, and almost really, that's why they are there, because they are poor, and I know the dynamics inside China, it has been explained to me very well, but if we might be, we, the Chinese people this time might find a place in their hearts for the Filipinos. After all, I come from there's a Chinese blood in me. So I hope that you treat us as your brothers, not your enemies, and take note of the plight of our citizens. Maraming salamat po. Erwin. Erwin. Wala na. O, tapos na si Pangulong Aquino. Wala na rin si Boss Jake. <laughs>